broad daylight, two gunmen entered with Kalashnikov in the center of Paris. It's a major attack on our democracy. <laughs> We're back outside the offices of Charlie Hebdo on the day of the biggest march in France's recent history to commemorate the victims of the three days of terror that struck the country and started with the shooting at the offices of this French satirical magazine. We're going to meet with a man called Luc Hermann, who runs a production company called Première Mine, which is right next to the offices of Charlie Hebdo. And by coincidence, back in 2005, he did a documentary about the younger Kuwaiti brother who was one of the gunmen in this terror attack. Can you tell me what happened on the day of the attack? I received a call from our uh, executive producer telling me that there was heavy, heavy shooting going, uh, going on. Um, uh, automatic rifle. They immediately understood that Charlie Hebdo uh, was the target. And uh, some of our reporters eventually flee on the roof over there. And this is where they managed to film the pictures that uh, went worldwide. Um, these are pictures where you see the two um, gunmen leaving the area. And this is where some policemen arrived and started um, uh, running towards the two, uh, the two gunmen. They opened fire on these policemen. And you hear one of the two gunmen um, uh, shouting à la Awagba. La la la! By a very strange coincidence, you happen to have made an investigative documentary about the younger Kuwaiti brother back in 2005. When did you find out, and what were you thinking when you heard that it was him and his brother who carried out this horrible attack? The night of the attack, when we heard the names, I said, wow, this rings a bell. So I went and I said, oh, of course, this cell. There was a, a very small cell, a uh, terrorist cell, in. Paris, in the heart of Paris, and uh, back in 2004 and 2005, this cell has sent young French nationals to Iraq via Syria. And Sherif Kouachi, the younger brother, he had been arrested because he was planning to go to Iraq. When I spoke to his lawyer, he said that a couple of months before, he was still um, smoking, he was, he was drinking alcohol. Apparently, he went to Yemen in 2010 or in 2011. And this is where he would have received some, uh, some training with the um, Al-Qaeda uh, fighters. The past years, we've seen a growing climate of Islamophobia. What do you think this attack could mean in the coming months. I, I sincerely hope that uh, um, this tragic event um, will not trigger tensions between the, the communities. The scope of the peaceful marches, I hope, will um, motivate people to debate and ease down tensions. We're trying to get to Place de la République, where the march is about to start. Paris is completely packed. They're expecting up to a million people to come today. How come you're wearing pen hats today? For solidarity, we're with the designers who were killed. We are also artists, so we decided to do this to demonstrate our solidarity. We are very shocked, that's for that too. So far, from what we've seen, everyone remains calm. The mood is one of solidarity. They've been shouting the slogan of the past few days, I am Charlie, nous sommes tous Charlie, je suis Charlie. Just a few minutes ago, we saw some anti-immigration posters by one of the far-right parties in France. And as I was commenting on them, all the people around me said, no, that's not our France. The reality in France is one of growing Islamophobia. It's still impossible to tell what's going to happen 
after these days of uh, solidarity, of protests, of marches, of commemoration, and what the situation will be in a France that already is facing lots of tension. The shooting at Charlie Hebdo and the days of terror that followed have happened in the midst of growing Islamophobia in France. What do you think will happen now? Je pense que va se passer exactement ce que les gens qui ont fait l'attaque euh, prévoyaient et espéraient, qui est que ça va aggraver les tensions. C'est des gens qui étaient des guerriers formés pour ça, qui voulaient la guerre. Et je pense que euh, la réaction va justement de monter les gens les uns, les uns contre les autres encore plus. Donc pour nous, c'est déjà des militants de notre parti qui sont de, de nos partis qui sont fait tuer. Euh, deuxième chose importante, on ne veut pas que ça serve comme le 11 septembre à justifier des guerres par derrière. The party on the opposite front of the political spectrum, Front National, the French far right national front, are not invited to this march today. Uh, what do you think about that? En pratique, je pense que c'est pas possible de manifester côte à côte avec le FN pour des raisons de sécurité déjà, mm -hmm. qui est que. Euh, on ne peut pas être côte à côte euh, sans que ça risque de dégénérer. Donc déjà, je pense que c'est tout simplement pas possible de faire la même manif avec eux. Euh, le FN était des ennemis désignés de Charlie Hebdo. Ça ne me choque pas qu'on veuille pas d'eux pour saluer leur mémoire. C'est-à-dire que suite euh, à la situation contre Charlie Hebdo, il y a une dizaine, déjà une dizaine d'attaques contre des mosquées. Euh, qui vont de poses de bombes artisanales, jets de grenades, tirs contre des mosquées. Pour nous, ça, c'est des, 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 de, des actions terroristes qui sont faites par l'extrême droite et on ne peut pas être associé à ce genre de réponse. Et euh, si, on a plus de, si on a plus de liberté d'expression, ben on n'a plus d'humour, on n'a plus le, la liberté de dire ce qu'on veut en humour en tout cas. Et euh, ça fait que ben, notre quotidien, ça ne serait plus le même. Donc on vient défendre ça aussi. Les événements des derniers jours ont choqué tout le monde à travers l'Europe. Quels étaient vos pensées Comment ça vous a affecté Moi, perso, moi j'étais devant la télé, j'ai appris ça après les cours, une fois rentré des cours. Et, euh, et ouais, ça m'a touché, j'en ai, ai pleuré, j'en ai versé quelques larmes parce que. C'est euh, frustrant de ne pouvoir rien faire, que ça se passe à quelques kilomètres de chez nous et euh, de regarder ça alors que, euh, que normalement ça ne devrait pas exister, quoi, ça ne de, devrait pas se faire. Despite the horrors of the past few days, people seem to be in high spirit um, and they're shouting out to everyone. France, don't be afraid. And people are holding flags from many different countries. They're even Two guys here holding an Israeli and a Palestinian flag. Salam, salam, nous on la malgam. Salam, salam, nous on la malgam. Salam, salam, nous on la malgam. Aujourd'hui, c'est un message pour la liberté d'expression et pour la paix avant tout. La paix dans le monde et contre tous les fanatismes. Vive la paix, vive la paix, vive la République. Et le plus gros symbole. Le plus gros symbole de la liberté aujourd'hui, c'est d'avoir un pro-palestinien, un pro-israélien, et il est pro-israélien aussi, et je suis pro-palestinien. Et on est pour la paix. Et on s'aime, et on s'aime, et on s'aime. On est ensemble. Voilà. On est ensemble. People have been marching for hours from Place de la République to Place de la Nation, where we're just about to arrive. Vous avez des différents signes. Je suis Charlie en, en arabique, en français, je suis Ahmed. Euh, pourquoi vous êtes venu à la marche Pour Charlie d'abord, pour la liberté, la démocratie, euh, pour la vie. Point. More than a million people took to the streets of Paris today and many more across France. The overwhelming feeling among the people we spoke to and from what we've seen is one of solidarity and, and peace. We even saw a Palestinian and Israeli hug and kiss and ask for peace. I have the feeling that people will stay up all night. <laughs> Thank you.